Here we have a torque balance. This has a meter stick with three masses attached as shown with quantities as specified in our problem statement. We want to find what mass mass three is in order to balance this out. We also want to find the normal reaction force at the fulcrum here when our system is balanced. Let's start by identifying what we care about and what we're going to draw a free body diagram for. It seems to me that drawing a free body diagram for the ruler or the meter stick itself is the right choice because that will include our normal force here as well as the mass from our unknown mass object three. I'm going to start with this free body diagram and say this will be my free body diagram for the stick. What we'll do is we'll draw the body and with the body, we will include relevant dimensions. Here's my body. And now we'll include the forces acting on this. We have point S right about here, 30 centimeters in. That'll be point S. And then we have our center of mass should be in the very center of the stick. We'll call that the center of mass. And now I think I can apply my forces. Let's go ahead and put some lengths on top. This will be 0.3 meters to get to where mass two is applied from the end. And then 0.4 meters to get to point S and another 0.3 meters to get over to the end. I'm going to specify that all lengths here are meters to make my life a little bit easier without having to write the little M everywhere in there. And then the center of mass, if that's 0.5 from the end, and we're 0.3 from the end to get to S, then this has to be 0.2 from the end there. And that's because it's a meter stick, so halfway between the ends of a meter stick is going to be at the 50 centimeter mark. Let's put our forces in. Our mass times gravity for our stick is acting down at the center of mass. Our normal force at that fulcrum is acting up. Our unknown mass, three times gravity, is acting down at the right. Our known mass, M1, times gravity, is acting down at the left. And then here we have mass two, which we also know, times gravity acting downward. Okay, lovely. With this, we should be able to write our equations of static equilibrium and solve for the unknowns that we want to solve for. I'm going to go ahead and say what they are right here. We want to find N and M3. That's two unknowns. So we'll have to write at least two equations of static equilibrium. Or at least that's what we'd expect. Let's start with the torque equation. And the reason why I'm starting with the torque equation is because I have two unknowns. If I choose my fulcrum correctly, or I choose my point to consider my torques about, I can have one of these forces not appear, and that way I can have one equation, one unknown. If I don't want to think about it, that's fine. I can just write equations, and I should be able to solve multiple equations for multiple unknowns. But ideally, I'd prefer to solve one equation, one unknown, if it's possible. I'll sum my torques about point S, calling counterclockwise positive, and those sum to zero. This is an equation of static equilibrium. And I do this so that that unknown force N will not appear because it's acting directly on there. It has no tendency to spin about that point, summing the torques about point S. Now we think about what the distances are and what the tendency to rotate. M1G is trying to rotate counterclockwise, which is positive, and it is 0.3 plus 0.4 or 0.7 meters away. That'll be 0 0.7 meters of lever arm, perpendicular lever arm, times M1G, plus my M2 is 0.4 away, so 0.4 meters times M2G, 
plus 0.2 meters for the center of mass times msg minus, because all of those were trying to go counterclockwise, this m3g is trying to go clockwise about the point I'm considering, point s. So it ends up as a negative. Its lever arm is 0.3 meters times the unknown m3g. And those all sum to zero. This is one equation with one unknown in it. We can solve this for the unknown. It seems like I can divide everything by gravity. And now we can move the m3 times 0.3 to the other side and divide by the 0.3, leaving us with an equation that is m3 is equal to 0.7 m1 plus 0.4 m2 plus 0.2 ms divided by 0.3 and we're good. That's what it is. The meters canceled and we're left with a mass. If I plug these all in grams, I can get my mass 3 in grams that says my mass 3 is equal to 317 grams. That's one of the things we were trying to find. The second thing is the normal force. For that, I'll need another equation, and luckily I can write one. I will write the sums of the forces in the y direction are equal to zero. We'll call up positive, and now we can say that upwards, the normal force is acting, and everything else is acting downward. So I can say normal force minus all these other things is equal to zero, or I can just move all the negatives to the other side initially and say whatever's going up, the normal force, has to equal whatever's pulling this thing down, m1g, plus m2g, plus m3g, and I might be tempted to factor out the g since it's g times all of these things, plus msg. We plug all of those things in and we get a normal force equal to 5.8 newtons. And that's upward as we had originally assumed. That makes sense. If it were not acting upward, how could it support this?